in YouTubers and welcome back to the channel. So as I um, go into uh, Impicos in April, which is a, a rally for the Hillman Imps every year, it's in Scotland, different areas, I need to uh, do a quick check over of the Sunbeam Imp Sport because this is what I'm going in this year. I went in the Chamois Sport last year and uh, so it's this time it's the, the Sunbeam Imp Sport. So what I'm going to do today is do a quick check over give it a bit of a clean up underneath not that that makes any odds because it'll get filthy going up there but i like to keep on top of it um, and i'm going to do a quick check over to make sure all the lights the um indicators the brakes are all okay change the oil and filter um if i get chance um check the fluid levels etc etc wiper blades all the usual put a bit of oil in the front a spur, a little bit of touching up, there's a little chip on the wheel arch just there and um, put some water in the front, get me tools out of the green one where I can get in it now and um, just check I've got all the tools, I need a few spurs just in case and uh, then we're all good to go. So first we'll start off by just checking the the lights are working. Um, quite a simple task, just check the side lights, they're on. So I've got four side lights on this, two in the headlamps and two in the indicators. So they're all working at the front. Just squeeze around the back, make sure the number plate lights are working. Right, thumbs up, got that. Headlamps will check. Yep, main and dip, yep. On. Indicators, they should be working okay. Let's check them. Drivers one, flashing at the front. Flashing at the back, passenger one, flashing at the front, flashing at the back, brake lights will just check with reflection, yeah, they're both working, wipers, yeah, and the washers, yeah, they're working, don't like putting water on the, don't like putting water on the screen, that's quick basic checks done, dash lights are working, radio working, interior lights working. So, next stage will be just to, uh, we'll just check the brake fluid level on the front. Um, now this has got a front opening bonnet. Like that. Uh, got my old important first aid kit from the uh, previous Mercedes I had. Tire dressing gel. Always have a bottle of beer, you never know. Try to know classic car, you need one sometimes. Um, polish in there, my chamois leather, fake one, got some oil, just ready for whatever, and I think I've got some water, yeah I've got some water down there, so just release the, um, well, this is in a slightly different place than the singer, but because this has got the second headlamp, they put a little corner bracket in on the sport, so again silicon fluid both right up to the top, it's a split reservoir this, so it does the clutch and it does the brakes, so there's no movement on that, so fingers crossed, we've nothing lost. Brake fluid wise, spare tire is solid, so that's not going down, that's got a cover on. Shan't be able to that. So first part of my checks are done. Switch my lights off. Next stage is to uh, get the front jacked up, check the kingpins, get the wheels off and uh, just check the brakes, readjust them and whatnot. so well. I'll get set up and then we'll uh, resume filming then. Okay, so the car's now jacked up as you can see and I will just do a quick check. Uh, there's a little bit of play in this kingpin on the driver's side which will get took up with the grease. However, I have no grease from the grease gun so I'll have to get some of that tomorrow. Uh, being um, being Good Friday, most of the places are shut, so Easter Saturday I'll nip to Euro car parts or German, Swedish and French and I'll get a couple of cartridges for the grease gun and I'll just re-grease that along with the uh, the chamois ones. So first of all I'm going to do is just check and I'll show you. Again, just top and bottom, there's a little bit, very little bit of play. A little bit left and right, which I've just had a look and it seems to be the steering rack. Got a bit of an issue, so we have to take the rack off I think and have a look at that. So uh, first part of call is we'll just get the we'll just get the wheel off. So I'll use my gun, give me a pack socket. So 
these are aluminium wheels called ultralights. These are from the um, Huddersfield Mini Spurs, and I've got uh, Yokohama A539 tyres on them. Um, these are about three or four years old now, these tyres. Still in really good condition, there's not very much wear on them whatsoever on the front because of that light. They're 175-60-13s, so they were, they were a great tyre. I've seen the, in the where the dates is on these when they were made, but I can't see it beyond somewhere. I'm not sure where, but uh, anyway, they're great tyre. I absolutely love them, and when I had this style of wheel on the chamois, I had these tyres on and I've run this car since I've done it with these tyres on because um, they're a great tyre, they grip really well um, so I'm very happy with them so, no screw in this drum here we have it's the, it's the lights there at the bottom so as you can see with this one over the um, over this chamois is that I've got just double shockers on this and these are the gas ones uh, looking a bit grotty now one thing I failed to do and what I would recommend anyone whoever buys these shockers if you don't want to go discoloured with the weather give them another coat of lacquer because they're just anodized and when they anodize them it gets attacked by the weather at all times so if you put a coat of lacquer on once you've set them all up and everything um, it'll just protect it a bit longer but they've got a little adjustable uh, control on it and uh, so I've got my one inch lowered springs they're sat nice on the platform and I can adjust the height so I've got it just set just right what I like anyway personally um, so we're all happy with that I've also got braided hoses on that this car these have been on since day one brilliant never had to replace them because they, they never fail like the rubber hoses um, and I've also got a Fiesta trap rod conversion so what happens with the imp they have a big long trap rod on um, which goes back to the steering rack and you'll see that big nut it's like an extension nut and it's normally one bar and one side's non-adjustable and you can only adjust it on the other but the beauty about putting a Fiesta conversion on which I've got on both cars is that you can actually adjust both wheels in and out so you can get your settings bang on for your wheel centres and lining your front and rear wheels up when you have it four way tracked where you can't the other way it doesn't always work just quite right and you just have to buy a little trap at end, which is probably about 10 or 15 quid off a auction website, whether it be eBay or from a supplier, from a standard Mark 1 or Mark 2 Fiesta. So they fit a treat, they do a conversion in the club, and it's, uh, it is really well worth um, purchasing if you've got one. So anyway, what we'll do now, we'll just get a screwdriver and we'll whiz the drum off. I'll get me a bit of cardboard, and hopefully with no leaking brake cylinders. The cardboard here to put underneath, try and protect the floor best I can. Oops. Get a screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, brake adjustment spanner. I need two types. And my Phillips screwdriver, which I've got here. So I'll just undo the screw like we did with the other. Like we do with the others. This just holds the drum on in place to one side and fingers crossed the drum will just come off. Yeah. There you go. So it's nice and dry inside, it's quite a bit of brake dust. So we're not too fussed about that because um, that means they're not, not no leaking cylinders. So I'll just peel the rubbers back. It's dry as a bone, which is really good. And I'll do that one. It's dry as a bone. If it's seized. Nope, it's gone back in. Just push the piston in with the screwdriver. That's gone in. So with no seized brake shoes, that cylinders. That's really good. Bit of brake dust. Now these are some fancy brake shoes I got off the M Club. Uh, they've got bits of wiring and all sorts. Looking at that, it's supposed to be really good for braking, which they are. They stops on the sixpence this car. Let's get my brake cleaner. Save having dust everywhere. I'll just, I'll just spray it. And this just gets rid of all the residue, um, great dust. You see all the muck dropping off there, and then it evaporates. So stops the brakes squealing when you get rid of the brake dust. I'll just give the edges a wipe round. Now this car has been done 20 years, so I did refresh it about 15 years ago. Sorry, 10 years ago, underneath paint the wheel arches and whatnot and 
but the rest of it's not been touched so it looks a bit grotty but my plan is eventually to take it off the road just had enough for doing a fiesta and do a bit of a refresh underneath and then give it a quick paint just a few I've got quite a few dents on it from uh, usage and uh, just clean breaks them out and give it a quick flash over a couple of different shades of red now where I've not managed to get the paint match correctly but I'm not too fussed it still looks good nobody really notices only me or nobody said anything so the brake drums are perfect I did have these skimmed by a neighbour they took a very thin skimming off to make sure they were do a circular so again what we'll do just to check the adjustment so we do anti-clockwise brings the brake shoes out and you can see that moving out and clockwise takes them in on this side and the same with that one now the bottom one is slightly different clockwise takes the shoe out and anti-clockwise takes the shoe in and there wasn't a great deal of adjustment on that for some reason so i don't know what yeah, it's gone right round you yeah. hear it jump off then so right off we're back right off there so we'll put them back right off again and just line the screw all up with the hole in the drum bang it up Freeze a bird. So I'll just put the screw in and I'll just pump the brake to centralise the shoes in the drum. And then when we adjust them, it'll be a bit easier. So, the pumps on the brake. The pedal's gone down a bit. That's it. Right. Okay. Brake's pumped up. Right, so I'll do I'll just do a quick adjustment. So anti-clockwise on this this one. I'll get the spanner on the right way and uh, do it till we can't turn it, and then slacking it off. So that's solid now. Get the screw back in, and we're we'll just slacking it off till it till it spins freely. He says. There you go. A bit tight. Binding that, so I'll take it. What we don't do is overdo them because they'll get hot and then seize and the right nightmare. So that's, that's just nice spinning free, just catching. And we'll do the bottom one. But that's solid, so we'll, we'll wind that back off so we get a bit of movement. Just a little game really to get it so it just catches just enough so it spins free. Right, so we're happy with that. That gives us a good pedal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna bore you. I'm just gonna give the wheel arch a bit of a clean off underneath because it's a bit grotty as you can see and the front suspension um, and and we'll go from there so I'll, I'll resume video in back shortly where I'll just show you what it's like when it's all cleaned up okay so I've now cleaned after following it obviously adjusting the brakes I've now cleaned the front suspension up on the driver's side and I've also cleaned the inside of the the front wheel as you can see down there it's nice and clean again the beauty of having drum brakes you don't get the brake dust as you would with a disc brake um, all over the inside of the wheels so it does make life a bit easier from a, a maintenance point of view but considering it's been done 20 years and it was rationed up uh, 10 years ago apart from the shock absorber which doesn't detract from its operation it's pretty good there's no major lumps of rust anywhere they look a bit of surface coming on the suspension arms but I have got some spur suspension arms which I'm going to have to and front hubs I'm going to have them sandblasted and uh, I'll paint them 
and do a swap over. I've got all new poly bushes on this, so I can just whiz the old bushes out and put them in the new arms, and I clean the shockers up at the same time and um, lacquer them so they don't corrode again. So that'll be a, a good mod. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move over to the other side now. So I've opened the bonnet because I have to get my polish on my boots. So this one I've actually carpeted with some uh, thin carpet just to make it look a bit more luxurious, should we say. Um, and then we're going to jump on. We're doing the work on this side. That's a bit tight here at the side of the garage. So hopefully I can, I can get in and... Uh, you can get some good footage, you might go from the other way actually. I might come, come back now. Oh, the man just banged me, put me there. My cupboard, right. So that's what we'll do, we'll just spin the wheel around and then we can see, see what we're doing there with this one. So I'll get this wheel off. There is no play in the uh, the ball joints, oh, the king pin on this side. So it's just a matter of uh, whizzing the wheel off. So I'll get the gun and uh, we'll whiz it off. Right way. To one side. And you can see not that really that dirty on the inside, it's a little bit. It's just general road muck, so we'll clean that up. Put the tyre swerving evenly in good condition. Now this side doesn't seem to be as dirty, obviously. Must have hit the road a bit more, so that spins freely. So what we'll do, we'll whiz the wheel off this this side, the hub, sorry, and uh, we'll just check. We'll check the brakes again. So I'll get me bits of bits of stuff. Move my cardboard round and uh, lantern. Put some light on the job. Let's just check. We're zoomed in so everybody can see. Um, the wheel where we're at, oh, the right way. So fingers crossed. I'll make sure I'm out of the way, and we'll uh, we'll get the drum off. So again, Phillips screwdriver. Yeah, on this. Just holds the drum on. Like I said, back to one side. Right, there you go. So that one's dry and good. Look a bit of surface rust on because it's not been used. So we're happy with that. A little bit, a bit of surface rust. No leak on that. This has had new shoe cylinders on and new shoes for about two years ago. So shouldn't have any issues really. That's nice and free. Push that on in. Push that one in. Right, that's nice and free. We'll just get the brake spanner on. The uh, oh no, this has got a. I welded a 10mm nut on that one because that was rounded off, so I'll get the 10mm spanner, but this one, that's free, the adjuster up, down, so anti-clockwise takes this one out, clockwise takes it in, so there's not a lot of brake dust on this one, so this one mustn't have been adjusted as high as the other side, but we'll just give it a courtesy clean, brake cleaner, and uh, inside the drum. I'm going to go and get the little 10mm spanner and uh, get the job's together. Right, so just check that this one is free. That's it. That's uh, anti clockwise to adjust out and clockwise to adjust in. So that's all dried off now. We'll just pop the drum back on, put the screw in. And we'll just pump the brakes to centralise the shoes and we'll give them a quick adjustment. And in theory, we're all done then on the front, apart from cleaning that front end up. Right, so I'll just give this a bit of an adjustment. So tighten it right up so it doesn't move. And then we're slacking it off. There we go. So that's just nice. Let's take it up a little bit more so we can get a midges. That's just nice that. I'll take this one down so it's tight and then just back it off slightly. Just nice. Just nice that. They've adjusted up lovely. 
trouble with drum brakes, you do have to constantly adjust them, unlike a disc, because a disc just self-adjusts, self-adjusts. But I like to, I've got a servo on it, so I like to have a, I think, does it know, they're perfect really with drum brakes on. People don't like them, they put disc conversion. I think they're just a bit too, too snatchy with a disc conversion, especially if you've got a servo, because they're very light on the front. So it doesn't do it any justice. So anyway, that's that for now. We'll, uh, we'll revert back when I've cleaned up the, um, the front end again. Okay, so now I've cleaned this one up, as you can see, it's come up really well, nice and clean. Also clean the back of the wheel. That's uh, nice and clean again now. Look like new. So really happy with that. So now I'm going to have a look and do a bit of investigation on this bit of play in the uh, steering rack. I have a spur rack, so I'm just going to drag that out the loft of the garage and um, see where we're at. But that's the lowering spring and the gas shock absorber with the adjustable platform just down there. Um, these are brilliant. I've had, I've had no issues with these whatsoever. I know some people have. I haven't. The uh, the springs are from the Imp Club, so they're actually at Monte Carlo, one inch lowered than standard, so it makes it sit just nice. And with the adjustable suspension, suspension it's, a, it's a firm ride. It holds the road really well. So I'll have to do a bit of uh, just looking at the bodywork. Needs a bit of a I mean, mop out and give it a bit of a buff over. Um, get some of the marks off from the usage but uh, all in all it's uh, it's um, in good condition so I'm really happy so we'll just get the other rack out and then we'll resume shortly okay so I've ended up taking a rack off the imp um, I had a little bit of movement in this here this is where the steering column goes on to and, and the, the chamfer and this translates your vertical movement into horizontal movement. Now you'll notice the rack on the imp is slightly different than a conventional car. A conventional car has the knuckles on the end and goes off side to side with your track with ends. The Hillman imp's in the middle and the shaft in the middle. You've got the worming gear here and that's the adjustment and it rotates a shaft in the middle. So in them little holes there, when I turn this, you'll see this, the threads disappear, it's turning right and turning left and that actually linear movement moves the wheels left to right must have been the way they designed with the with the um swinging arms or whatever they won't work off the end but i don't know maybe they just decide to do something different so anyway digressing what happened is this is an early rack with um two seven sixteen studs on this it's like the aluminium top this is a later rack i've got three of these they're all in this states of disrepair. You want binning or sending off to the imp club. So, what 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 was happening? This is the worm and gear, and it should just pull out, but this one's quite tight, um, and it has shims in it, and they're basically like shims you get in a thin shims in a ball joint, for instance, on a British Leyland or the likes, and thicker thicker shims, and then it has the burr in just on the inside. And what was happening with mine, the shims had worn and this was lifting up and down in its casing, causing me to have a bit of play in the steering. Now this one is very tight and I think this one's all right. I think I've took this off for some reason off the car because they have a bush on the inside in here. So here's another rack I've got. They have a bush inside and the bush inside there and that holds the shaft. So this will probably explain a bit more when I turn this turns it from left to right you'll see the gear this will drive right off the end if I'm not careful but that basically turns the wheels left to right and you can see how it sticks out into this rubber boot and that, that rubber boot covers the end and the bearings were and I think the reason I took this one off is because when you go over the bump it clatters through the steering because because of the movement because it's fixed on these spigots here so anyway, digressing. So what had happened, this was starting to move up and down on my rack on the car. So I've re-shimmed it and now it's moving lovely, as you can see by finger. A little bit noisy, but I think that's just because it's sitting in a slightly different place. But it's not moving up and down now like it was before. So fingers crossed, 
sorted the problem out. So what I'm going to do is put this one back together loosely. I'll give this to Bob in the Imp Club, our Spurs secret secretary, and he'll do some repair works. These are quite expensive, these boots. It's about 70 or 80 quid, I think, now for the three boots. So um, I'll probably take that one off, off this one. Keep it, these end bits. Keep them end bits, give him the rest, and he can do what he needs to do. Now these are the two bolts that hold the, the arms on. And they just bolt through. So what I'll have to do, I've lost a bit of oil in this, so I'll top it up with oil before I put, before I put the, um, before I put it back on the car. Now it's just gear oil, I've put a bit of gear oil in, so fingers crossed, we'll put a bit of gear oil in and uh, job's a good one. We'll put it back on the car, uh, might have to readjust the steering wheel, um, hopefully won't, but you never know. And fingers crossed, with no play and we'll report back shortly. Okay, so as um, we've now got the rack on, and as, as Baldrick said in, in Blackadder, I come up with a cunning plan because obviously, once I filled the rack up with gear oil, it would have all poured out the holes that it poured out on the bench. So I used my blue, trusty blue gloves, bung the holes up, and put the rack on with no spillage. So now it's, uh, it's turning lovely. No noisier than before, but there's no play which we had before so job well done there I'm uh, quite chuffed I've got that sorted so what I'm going to do now is uh, we'll move jack the car back up and then we'll, we'll uh, sorry I'll put the wheels back on God, I kept myself right put the wheels back on and then we'll whiz round to the back and uh, get that one started off speak to you in a bit okay so now we're going to Start on the passenger side, we get jack the car up. I'll just squeeze the wheel off. Just check the play in the bearing. Nope. A little bit. But uh, they've had new bearings. So there's not a lot I can do with that. The hub must be worn a little bit. The wheel off. Uh, got a few stones in the tyres, but again, the A539 Yokohamas were in lovely. Um, and look over the dirt in the back, but I'll give that a polish shortly. Right, so as you can see, this is quite uh, it's quite dirty in here. This is from the obviously from the road. You can't do anything about that, I'm afraid. I have to just uh, persevere, but I'll get it cleaned up shortly. So what I'm going to just do, <coughs> I'll check the donut while we're here. I'll turn the wheel and I can see in. And the donut, they've been replaced quite recently. Looks to be in great condition. And nothing untoward. So we'll get the screwdriver with the, the draft. Now you can see the bit of surface rust here from the dampness when it's been in the garage for quite a while over the winter period. This is a bit. I have to just get the screwdriver on it. Might need a bit tight this, the hand brakes off. So let's give it a crack. I think it's stuck on the hub here. Got the feeling of it because it shouldn't be that tight. It should come off quite easily, but they've not been off for six to eight months. Don't really like hitting the drum with a hammer because. I have got a rubber mallet, let me go and find that. One said rubber mallet. There you are. Just a bit of, bit of corrosion on there, yep, so plenty of brake dusting, which is always a good sign because it means the um, no leaks. So we'll just check this cylinder, pop this one out. That's not seized and it's dry. So we'll get the brake cleaner off the bench. Excuse me. And then uh, we'll give it a clean off. All the brake dust off. And many years ago, probably older folk like myself, I was in the garage, used to have an airline and you'd blow all this off. And stupidly, not realising the consequences of asbestos. And uh, we just did it, so we'll probably all end up poorly as we get older. Anyway. We've got stuff to prevent that now, so let me just 
should use it, shouldn't we? Right, so that's all that cleaned off. We'll give the uh, the drum a dry out just to help the evaporation process a bit quicker. We'll see it in front of your eyes evaporate it. Clean that off. And what I'll do, I'll get a bit of sandpaper and I'll just I'll just take the edge off that and we'll put a bit of grease. I've got some copper grease. Put a bit of grease around that to prevent that. But these are all going to come off in the future when I uh, when I do a bit of a refurb. So. This is the adjustment on the top, it's a bit like a BMC Mini, you wind it in, pushes the shoes out, wind it out, uh, clockwise, takes the shoes in. So just, oh, they're getting a bit low on them shoes, getting a bit low on the rivets, There's still a few thousand mile left on that one in particular, it's pretty low, so, hmm, a bit hot that way, it's worthy that one, but I'll get this season out of that, I'll have to speak to Bob in the Imp Club and, um, some rear shoes off him. Okay, dokie, so I've got my P80s. Just give it a quick bit of on the inside there. Make life a bit easier for coming up in the future. I've got my trusty copper grease. I've had this about 15 years and there's virtually nothing left in the in it, but I just can't bear to throw it away, and it's silly. But I have another tin, but it's just I just like that. I just like that for some reason. I don't know why. So what we'll do, we'll give that a bit of a stuff off as well round the up. There we go. We'll just put a smear in a grease around that. Put some on the studs at the same time. I hope the wheel nuts come on and off easy. Right, and then we'll just pop the drum back on. It says. There we go. Right, screw back in. And then uh, we'll just check the handbrake linkage is free, which I believe it will be. Just at the back here. Yeah, not seized, so we'll put a, try and get some more grease out and just put a bit on, just preventative. And then what we'll do, we'll do the same as we did at the front, we'll wind it right in till it's rock hard, and then we'll wind it off. One, two, three. Right, we're on solid there, so I'll take it down one. Yeah, that's just nice that. So it has it has adjusted up one click and break on. Lovely, right. So I won't bore you again with my cleaning skills, but that's uh, near side rear um, brake checked and adjusted. So I'm happy so far. Just one more corner to go. Okay, so that's that uh, side all done and clean. Now you can see, still not bad for ten years since it was refreshed. Just over ten years, so. I can see with the shock absorber, if it had a lack of that, again, it wouldn't have gone anodizing, corroded, but hey-ho, that's, that's what happens. Live and learn, don't you? I'll not do it again. But, uh, right, we'll get the wheel back on this side and we'll move on to the driver's side. Okay, so I've saved uh, a bit of time. I've uh, cleaned the brakes up, cleaned the drums, cleaned off underneath. As you can see now, it's all clean. It's not, it's not. Concord by no manner of means it was 20 years ago but it's done nearly 40,000 miles so it's had a bit of use but shoes could do replacing on the back that size a little bit thin I'll get this season out of it and um, we'll get some new shoes off Bob from the Imp Club but uh, that's it now just going to put the drum back on just the brakes and um, check the oil and water just check the plugs over which we'll do in a minute and then uh, quick polish and a hoover and we're ready for the show this weekend if we go anywhere uh, might use this one and uh, we're, we're uh, ready for Scotland so that's a job done, well done been playing on my mind for a bit but at least I know all the brakes mechanical it's okay um, fingers crossed we'll get there with no problems but you never know right speak soon 
Okay, so I've just checked the oil and water. I've had to put a cup full of water in it and uh, hardly any oil. Um, it's a bit black, the oil, but it'll do me for going to Scotland. I've made that decision. I'll change it when I come back. Just whiz the plugs out. Number one and number three. Number three, look a bit blacker, but this one is running absolutely beautiful. Uh, beautiful colour on it. You know, nice plug gap. Uh, NGK BP6 ESs, I do say in, a, in another video I've got seven ESs in, I did add them in, but I've reverted back to six ESs and put that plug back in. Really, there's not much more to do on this. Um, I've had a quick look over, everything is unky dory, just need to add fuel and uh, I'm ready. I'm going to give it a polish and then. That's me done on this for today. I'm going to quick wipe over the engine bay. But I'm, I'm happy with everything. Air filters are alright. Just need to check the dash pots. That's what I've not done. I'll just check the dash pots. There's a bit of oil in that. There's plenty of oil in. Check the back one. Yeah, that's okay. Just listen to it drop. Yeah. That's dropping lovely, so that's not sticking whatsoever. Just screw the cap back on that one. And, uh, yeah, that's stopping lovely, so happy with that. So really, this is, uh, apart from a polish, we're all ready to go. And uh, I'll, I'll do a, probably a time lapse of me polishing. Um, and I'll just use my auto glims. I bought some new auto glims car lube, which is this here. Fast shine and lube. And it's... Uh, it was used in the garages when they washed the cars and it's absolutely fantastic. You spray it on, wipe it off, and even if you don't wipe it off, it just disappears. It leaves no streaks, it's really good, so 30 quid for a gallon. Thought that'll last me a while that so the next job is to uh paint so polish the car. I'll do that now and uh we'll do a time lapse video on that so and then that'll be me done. So thanks for watching, hope it's helped anyone else who just wants to check the car over again for a road trip. Do the essentials. I've just got to check the tyre pressures. That's one thing I will do, but I'm not going to video that. Um, but apart from that, we're all done and dusted. So we'll uh, do the video, the time lapse of uh, polishing, and then we'll call it a wrap. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon.